So what we investigated in our first little video lab was the idea of enthalpy. And enthalpy is the system energy, which means that's what we are interested in as chemists. The problem is that as a chemist, we can never measure the system energy directly. We just have to look at what our system does to the surroundings. So a change in enthalpy, we can't put a probe in and measure one tiny little bond breaking, but we can see what happens when lots of bonds break and energy moves. So a change in enthalpy can be detected by looking at a change in temperature. Since delta is final minus initial, or since you end with products, products minus reactants, if delta H is a positive number, that tells us that the enthalpy has to increase. The products must be greater than the reactants. If delta H is a negative, then that tells us that the enthalpy of the system decreased. Our final number was smaller than the initial number we subtracted. And enthalpy can be involved in both chemical changes in making and breaking chemical bonds, or it can be involved in a physical change, like the energy involved in getting ice to melt or water to boil. So looking at enthalpy change in reactions, okay, well, the energy of the reactant can be greater than the energy of the products. So our products would be a smaller number than our reactants. And so final minus initial products minus reactants would give us a negative number. That means energy exited the system, that is exothermic. The system loses energy, but the first law of thermodynamics says that the surroundings have to pick up that energy. The energy cannot just disappear. So the surrounding energy increases, and we see that with an increase in temperature. So if delta H is negative, less than zero, then delta T will always be positive because that's what picks up the energy from the system, the surroundings gain the energy from the system. The other option is that sometimes the energy of the reactant is less than the energy of the product. That means final minus initial products minus reactants. In that case, delta H is going to be positive. Energy has been essentially kind of pushed uphill. We had to push energy into the system to get up to these products. And that means energy went in to the system, and you hear that N and in. Maybe we'll help you remember that this is endothermic. Energy increases in the system. So the chemicals get energy, and the energy can't just magically appear. It has to come from these surroundings. So the surroundings are losing energy. We see that with a negative delta T. The temperature is lower than where it started. So let's look at this diagram here of reactants and products. And I want you to think about whether this is endothermic or exothermic. And you can pause the video here for a second and write down what you think. Is this endothermic or exothermic? Now, in fact, in this case, the enthalpy of the products is greater than the reactant. So delta H would be positive. This is endothermic. The interesting thing about thermodynamics is that thermodynamics really only cares about 
where do I start and where do I end? Anything that happens in the middle is actually the job of, of kinetics, which is something that we will study in AP chemistry. So we will talk a little bit about what this hill means, but if we're just looking at is the reaction endothermic or exothermic, we are just looking at products and reactants, not what's going on in between. So look at a problem we could perhaps do. From this reaction diagram, where I have the enthalpy or potential energy here on the y-axis, the reaction pathway, or sometimes you'll see reaction progress or time on the x-axis, calculate the change in enthalpy. So the first thing we have to think about is which one of these lines here, A, B, or C, is going to represent the enthalpy of the reaction. So pause this for a minute, take a look at the diagram, and decide which one, line you need to look at. Okay, so we said we aren't worried about what's going on in between the reactants and the products. We're just looking at what's going on, where do I start, where do I go? The energy difference between reactants and products would be a line C here. Okay, and so I would do final minus initial, products minus reactants. My products look to be about 300. My reactants look to be about 100. And so if I do final minus initial, I get that this is a positive 200, probably kilojoules is most likely to be the unit here, joules or kilojoules. Joules are the SI unit for energy. So is this reaction going to be endothermic or exothermic. And if you said that this is endothermic, you are correct. The products are higher energy than the reactants. So energy went into the system to make products. Into the system, it entered the system and it's endothermic. So we do keep seeing this little hill in the center, and that actually does have a meaning. It's called the activation energy, and that's something that we'll study a lot more in AP chemistry. What that tells us is in order to react, molecules have to contact each other. I could put two chemicals next to each other on the shelf for 20 years. Nothing will happen until they actually mix and the molecules get close enough together to connect. And they have to have enough energy when they collide to break bonds so we can start making new bonds. And that's the activation energy. That's this hill in the center. How much energy do I need to break the bond and start making some new bonds. That's the activation energy. Well, one thing we can think about then is in the reactions that we tried, both of the citric acid and the magnesium and hydrochloric acid reacted without us having to add any extra energy. And that tells us that there must have been enough energy in the solutions and in the chemicals already so that the chemicals were able to collide, get over the activation energy, and get the reaction to go and keep going. So here's a question. Is this reaction profile an endothermic or exothermic reaction? Go ahead and pause so you can think about this. Once you've decided, go ahead and hit play. So I did highlight here is the activation energy. 
But here, between products and reactants, is the delta H. Remember, I don't care about anything that happens in the middle when I'm looking at thermochemistry. And that means this is exothermic because their product energy is lower than the reactant energy. And I could give this an imaginary set of numbers and try it just to see. If I said that this was 50, this might be 250. Final minus initial, products minus reactants, 50 minus 250. Well, that would be negative 200. A negative delta H means it's a exothermic reaction. Energy is exiting the system. So when we're talking about reactions, sometimes we will see this written either as part of the reactant or just kind of next to it as part of the information. So here I have this reaction. This is propane burning. This is an oxidation reduction combustion reaction. And we see that the delta H here is negative 2,219 kilojoules per mole. And I hope when you think about that, that makes some sense. This should be exothermic because this is burning propane. This is making a steak on a grill. Your steak is getting hot. So the change in temperature is positive, which means energy has to be leaving the system. In this case, I have a spot where delta H is positive, 26.5. That tells me that this is an endothermic reaction. And since it's an endothermic reaction, I should see a negative change in temperature. Sometimes you see people even just write it right directly into the chemical equation. This is a thermodynamic equation because heat is included in the chemical reaction equation. And in this case, I see heat coming out. Heat coming out means that I'm losing energy, and that means I'm producing energy, and that's exothermic. If I produce energy, it should warm up the surroundings. So if it's a product, that tells me this is exothermic. If it's endothermic, that tells me I had to put energy into this, push it uphill, just like I have to put reactants in. I have to put heat in, and it's endothermic. So endothermic and exothermic, the concepts are really very fundamental to thermochemistry.